everybody, it's Miss Sherlyn with the Wayne County Public Library and today we're going to talk about dogs and the first dog we're going to talk about is the Yorkie Terrier. This is Toto. She is a Yorkie Terrier. She is my sister's dog and my mom's and my stepdad's. She's a good dog. Maybe she'll stay here the whole entire time for the story. Maybe. <laughs> so here's our story that we're going to read. It's Chewy Louie. It's one of my favorite stories. Chewy Louie is by Howie Snyder, so he drew the pictures and wrote the words, and it is published by Rising Moon. One day, my father brought home a little black puppy. He was very cute and always hungry. We called him Chewy Louie. He ate everything we put in his bowl. Then he ate the bowl. My mother was very worried. He'll get sick, she said. He won't get sick, my father said. He's just a puppy. And then he brought Louie a new bowl. That one didn't make him sick either. Louie slept with me in my bed at night when he wasn't eating my toys. Louie ate my trains before they even reached the station. Then he ate the station. My mother was very worried. My father said that he would buy me a new set of trains. He's just a puppy, he said. One day, Louis started to eat the back porch. My mother was horrified. My father was a little concerned too. That's some puppy, he said. We decided to take Louis to the vet. The vet said to feed him more. He's just a growing puppy, he said. And then he gave us the bill. That night, my father and mother sat down to figure out what to do. I was afraid they were going to give Louie away. My father hired a construction crew to repair the house. My birthday party was coming up soon and my mother wanted the place to look nice. What a cute puppy, said one of the workmen. They went inside to talk to my father about, to the, about the job. Then they came back out and saw their truck. Then they quit the job. My father was furious. I thought he was really going to send Louie away this time. He decided to hire a trainer. The trainer arrived the next day and immediately went to work. Sit! No, 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 bad dog, bad dog, bad dog. No, 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 bad dog, stop that. And so did Louie. Then my father had to hire another trainer. She brought a guitar along and sang songs to Louie about the error of his ways. I love you, then you don't chew. You bet your pretty teeth I do. It's not nice to eat the table. Even if you're able, wood's not good for you. I think Louie liked her songs very much, but he really liked her guitar. We didn't have any more time to worry about Louie now. My birthday party was tomorrow and we had all the hard work to fix the place up. My mother wanted the party to be a big success, but instead all her worst fears came true. Louie was horrible. I woke up the next morning feeling miserable. I knew now that we couldn't keep Louie. I decided to play one last game of fetch with him. Although it wasn't really fetch, I just threw the sticks and Louie ate them. But not today. Louie brought the stick back today. Hey dad, I shouted, look at Louie. He's not chewing anymore. Even my mother was impressed. Louie was changing. He was getting older and bigger every day. 
He didn't even eat my toys anymore. My mother's still worried. Do you think he stopped chewing for good, she asked. Of course, said my father. He's not a puppy anymore. And then I always love this last page because Chewy Louie got a hold of it. I hope you all enjoyed that story and I'll be sure to tune in and we will show you the next couple of dogs. This is Cooper. He is a cute puppy dog. He just wants to play. So I'm going to read you a story on Muddy Paul's new friends. And it is written by Steve Smallman. And the pictures are illustrated by Simon Mendez. Since we're talking all about dogs. It was published by Paragon. Ben and his puppy Muddy Paws were best friends. They did everything together, from galloping games to quiet cuddles. But when Ben went to school, Muddy Paws had to stay at home with nobody to play with. Then one day Ben said, come on Muddy Paws, let's go to school. Muddy Paws was very excited and pulled on his leash all the way. But they didn't go to Ben's school. They went to... Puppy school! Two other puppies came over to say hello. Droopy, a little puppy with big dangly ears, was a little bit shy. But his friend Patch wasn't. Muddy Paws, why don't you play with your new friends till it's time to start school, said Ben. Ben opened the door and the three puppies chased each other around and around the yard. Muppy, Muddy Paws loved having new friends to play with. The three puppies found a big puddle. Splish! Droopy tiptoed in up to the bottom of his ears. Splash! Muddy Paws jumped in up to his tummy. Splosh! Patch jumped in up to his collar. It's time to start the class. The first lesson was on sitting. Sit, Droopy said. Sit, Muddy Paws rolled over. Oh, Muddy Paws, chuckled Ben. Nice try, but not just right yet. Sit, Patch took, he shook water all over that place. The second lesson was on fetching. Everyone had brought a rolled up sock for their puppies to fetch. Fetch. Muddy Paws and his new friends galloped off together. Droopy picked up his sock. Muddy Paws picked up his sock too. Patch pounced on his and then he shook it until it unrolled, flew up in the air and... Landed on Muddy Paws' head. Muddy Paws and Droopy happily trotted back together. Good boy, laughed Ben. You fetched your sock, and now you look just like your friend. Before the end of class, the teacher wanted to try the sitting lesson again. Sit, Droopy said. Sit, Mighty Paws woofed happily, but he didn't sit. Sit, Patch chased his tail. He didn't like to sit still. Ben thought he'd try one last time. Come on, Muddy Paws, you can do it. Sit, said Ben. Just then, Patch ran over to get his sock back, but his leash got tangled around Ben's legs. Ben fell on his bottom with a great big bump. And because Ben was sitting down, Muddy Paws sat down. And because their friend Muddy Paws was sitting down, Droopy and Patch sat down too. Hooray, cheered Ben, you did it. When it was time to go home, Muddy Paws was a little bit sad to say goodbye to Droopy and Patch. Don't worry, Muddy Paws, said Ben. You'll see them again next week. So with a happy goodbye woof, 
Muddy Paws headed back home with Ben, his very best friend of all. The end. I hope you all enjoyed that story and I'll let you say goodbye. Come here, Cooper. Say bye, Cooper. Hey, can you wave goodbye to Cooper? Bye, Cooper. It's me, Mr. Lunigan. So this is my dog, Chico. He is a miniature chihuahua. He's a long-haired chihuahua. He's very small, but he is very well-behaved. He's a good boy. He's my best friend. <laughs> so he's going to lay here, hopefully, while I read Gobi. And I thought this book looked like him, so that's why I'm reading it. It's a little dog with a big heart, which is sometimes Chico. It depends. So, a little dog with a big heart. This is Gobi. It is written by Dion Leonard, and it is illustrated by Lisa Manzuic. So, she illustrated all of the pictures. And it is published by... Well, it's published in Nashville, Tennessee. That's pretty close. By Tommy Nelson. To all dog lovers, no matter where life takes you, your dog will always be there for you. Stretch! The little dog stretched her legs and sighed. It was hard to live all alone in the blazing hot Gobi Desert. Maybe today I'll find a friend, she thought hopefully. Just then a strange noise in the distance made her ears perk up. I'm going to chase that noise, the curious dog decided. She took off, racing across the sandy dunes. A man named Dion stretched his long leg muscles and checked, checked his supplies one last time. He and hundreds of others were getting ready to run a, a race across the Gobi Desert that took seven days to complete. He had trained long and hard and was ready to go. Pop! The starting gun fired. Dion took off, racing across the sandy dunes. Thump, 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 thump. The ground shook beneath the dog, and then she saw the most amazing sight. Friends! So many friends, and they were even playing chase. The wind blew back her ears, and her paws sent sand flying behind her. She was going to catch them. Dion focused on the trail ahead as he ran. Always look forward, he said to himself. Never look back. That's what he told himself every race. That's what he needed to do to win. He looked down and to his surprise, there was a little dog running right beside him. Ruff, ruff, the dog barked and gave him a doggy smile. She liked the sound of his voice. This was the best game of chase that she had ever played. Could this man be my friend? She kept running beside him. The temperature was 120 degrees, and Dion was so thirsty. He gulped down some water, and it trickled down his chin and splashed onto his shirt. You must be thirsty, too. He knelt beside the panting pup and poured water into his cupped hand. She was thirsty, too. The races kept running. Through the sandy dunes, up the rocky slopes, under the burning sun, the dog's legs were short, but she ran fast to keep up with Dion. I think I'll call you Gobi, Dion said to her, because you were as tough as the Gobi Desert. Yip, yip, Gobi barked in agreement. She ran ahead, then circled back to her friend, barking playfully as she encouraged him to. The race was so long that the tired runners camped in tents along the trail at night. Chomp, crunch, chew. The racers filled their growling tummies with the small food supplies they had in their packs. Uh-oh. Dion looked down at Gobi. I didn't bring extra food, but I can't let you go hungry. He gave her a small piece of jerky, and she gobbled it right up. Soon, other runners were sharing with Gobi, too. A bite of granola, a little bit more jerky, a piece of dried fruit, this tastes much better than eating bugs in the desert, Gobi thought. The 
The stars lit the desert sky as the razors went to sleep. Gobi curled up next to Dion. For the first time, she was safe and cared for. Maybe you will be my forever friend, Gobi thought, as she nuzzled Dion and drifted off to sleep. The two friends continued racing together. One day, the course went through a rushing river. Dion ran into the waist-deep water as it splashed and pushed against him. Arf, arf! Gobi whimpered from the shore. Oh no, she thought. My friend is leaving, and the water is too deep and rough for me. Woof, woof! Please come back. Big puppy tears filled her eyes. Dion was almost gone. Oh no. Where's Gobi? Dion asked himself, realizing that she was not with him. He broke his own rule and looked back to see Gobi pacing the shore and barking for him. He had a hard decision to make. He could keep going to win the race, or he could go back and get his friend. I'm coming, Gobi. He rushed back to shore and scooped her up in his arms. We're a team, Dion told Gobi. I won't leave you behind. Gobi knew that she had found her forever friend. Days went by and they ran side by side. They were so tired, hungry, and sore. When Gobi was tired, Dion carried her, and when Dion was tired, she barked her happy bark and wagged her tail to encourage him. I see it, Gobi. I see the finishing line. The blazing sun made it sparkle in the distance. Closer, closer, closer. They finished the finish line together, and the people cheered wildly. Dion and Gobi each received a shiny medal. They knew they had earned more than medals, though. They had each learned a friend for life. Hooray, hooray for Gobi and Dion! <laughs> the end. I hope y'all like that story. It was so cute. So I'm going to show you one little thing. We're going to act out like a puppy and a kitty cat. So if you can hold up your left fist. No, this will probably look left on the camera. Left fist, here's a little puppy, and here's a little kitty. Puppy goes to sleep, curled up on his mat. Kitty creeps softly, tickles puppy's chin. Puppy wakes up quickly. See, the chase begin, and they're just going to chase each other around in circles. And then I'll show you, we have our little craft kit you're going to get this week. So. We have, can you find the missing house? Turn it that way. Uh, missing dog, oh, missing bones, not the missing house. Can you find the missing bones on the paper? And we have short O, so what you're gonna do if you have this at home, you get to cut out these little squares and you rotate this cute little thing all the way around and it will help you. So if it stops in front of the D, you have doll, we have dot, we have dock, and we have dog. And then it has the instructions that you'll get to. Then you'll make a little paper that looks like this with your dog that you'll get and your dog has and the bone and its little food bowl. Chico is so interested in this. So you get to make your own little dog house paper and name your dog. You get to help the dog find his food dishes and color them as you find them. And then some of you may get these little packets called Before You Buy a Dog. And it shows you that dogs are playful, they need protection, dogs grow, dogs may need a license, some of them do. And dogs need companionship. As you can see, me and Chico are very bondedly close, so that's why he's in my lap probably all the time. <laughs> and then we have Dogs need all of the above for their lifetime, so they're really loved and your best friend. And we have which is the biggest, how to take care of a dog. And then we have a dog picture and a D. It shows you how to do a big D and a little D. And again, D is for dog. And a little number tracing page. And then guess what it makes? A dog. And then that paper that I told you you would get with your little dog on it. Here's your dog house. Here's the dog. Then you'll get your bone and the food like this right here. Here's the bones and the food. 
And that is it. That should be all that you get in your little craft bag. I hope you enjoyed us this week. And poor Chico looks like he's going to take a nap. You say bye, Chico. Bye. Bye, Chico. Bye, guys.